myself Angita Tiwari from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology from ITS department. I am going to take a session from the subject that is computer vision. Subject code is 3171614. The module that we are going to cover is module number 5 that is camera calibration is the module name. The first topic that we are going to start in module number 5 is camera models. Now initially what is camera calibration? So any of the thing that is with respect to camera. The process of computing we can say what the camera parameters is called camera calibration and calibration involves many things like it processes that uses images of a 3d object with a geometrical pattern as for example like a checkerboard so this pattern is also called as calibration grid now with respect to that the 3d coordinate that we are taking in the 3d object of the pattern has to be matched to the 2d image point because we need to take that point into our 2d plane and to get the uh, output as the uh, image itself so the geometric camera, uh, camera calibration that we are taking the parameters as also referred to as camera resectioning now estimating the parameters of a lens and the image sensor of an image or we can say a video camera so you can use these parameters like camera resectioning then estimating the parameters of the lens also the image sensor of an image we have already studied the two types of sensors that we have in camera that is CMOS and CCD so with respect to that we are also having many parameters and these parameters can be used to correct for the lens distortion that we are having in camera also it measures the size of an object in the world units that we are taking it also it will determine the location of the camera in the scene so these tasks we can say are used in applications such as machine vision where we can detect and measure the objects here we are using these concept in robotics we can say for navigations that is for any of the navigation techniques that we are using it and also the reconstruction process that we are using so machine vision basically the application that we are using to take for the detection and measuring the objects we can use this ca camera calibration the different techniques that or the parameters for making the ca uh, cam or uh, image very accurate so with respect to that we are also having the examples what you can do after calibrating your camera so here are the different examples like before what and after what the image would be whenever we are doing the camera calibration with respect to that we are also having the different like estimating the depth queuing of any of the image that we are having in the second of the image a third image that will showing like we can have the objects as accurate as we hope we have with respect to the dimensions that we are taking it also we are having the intrinsic and extrinsic parameters that we can define for a particular image and then redesigning it so these are the different examples that we can do for your image calibration and after your calibration how the object can be seen through the camera now with respect to that the camera parameters include many of the uh, parameters like intrinsics we have then we have extrinsic parameters and also we have distortion coefficients which can be used for setting the lens distortion as in to get the image or the clarity of the image so here to estimate the camera parameters that we have discussed right now that is intrinsic extrinsic or we can say uh, distortion coefficients we can estimate the camera parameters where the estimation you need to have the 3d world points that we are using because we are viewing the object in 3d view and their corresponding 2D image points. Now you can get these correspondences using the multiple images of a calibration pattern, such as we can say as an example, we have seen like a checkerboard. So using the correspondences that you have, you can solve for the camera parameters. The parameters that we have discussed, like extrinsic parameters, intrinsic parameters, or the distortion coefficients. So after you calibrate a camera, means after the calibration is done with respect to the parameters, to evaluate the accuracy of the estimate parameters. Okay, estimated means the parameters accuracy we need to find it out. Estimated means we are taking a just approximation where you can like plot the relatives, relative locations of the camera. Also the calibration pattern that you need to have for a particular image. Also calculating the reprojection errors that you are projecting it because you are taking from one place to another place means any of the thing that we are taking means reprojections. Then we have calculating the parameter estimation errors that we have for a particular parameter to use. Then also using the camera calibrator to perform the camera calibration and evaluating the accuracy of the estimated parameters that we are taking.
So the computer vision toolbox that is given here we have contains camera calibration algorithms for pinhole camera model and fish eye camera model. So here the two of the camera models are defined: the pinhole and fish eye. But with respect to that, we have more uh, camera models as well where you, the techniques has been used. So you can use the fish eye that is modeled with cameras up to the field of view of 190 degrees. With respect to that, when you want to take an image with 195 degrees, you can use fish eye model because it is very much useful for this such type of degree of rotation. So the list that we have for a camera models types that we have, that is pinhole camera model, then we have fish eye camera model, then we have orthographic projections, we can say scaled orthographic projection which comes with orthographic projection as well. Also we have para perspective projection, also we have perspective projections. So basically we have these types of uh, projections uh, and we can say camera models. Now with respect to that we will be discussing each and every one but the first camera model that we are going to discuss today is pinhole camera model in this session. So pinhole camera model with respect to the four of the properties or the parameters that we have already discussed that is intrinsic parameters, extrinsic parameters, also the different lens distortion parameters that we need to set for a particular lens of a camera. So here the pinhole camera model here we can say it is a simple camera model without a lens and we can say with a single small aperture. The distance between the camera and the film. So light rays that passes through the aperture we can say and project an inverted image on the opposite side of the camera. Okay. So think of a virtual image plane where we can take the camera in front of it and then containing the upright image of the uh, scene. So this is what that we are going to do in pinhole camera model. So the pinhole camera model at parameters are represented by a 4 by 3 matrix which is also called a camera matrix and this matrix maps the 3D world scene in the image to a 2D world scene because here we are taking the view of the view plane in a 3D form but we need to convert that 3D view to 2D view in order to see the image or to take the output of the image. So the pinhole camera parameters basically are represented by 4 by 3 matrix which is also known as camera matrix. Okay, so this is what the image is being shown with respect to the uh, parameter or we can say the pinhole camera model that we are going to use. We are having an image okay, which is placed and the object which is there uh, placed at the uh, last scene which is being projected on a 3D object means 3D view plane which we are taking in. So the distance between the view plane, the camera, it is virtual image plane and the distance between the uh, we can say the 2D image that we are seeing it from the image plane that length is known as focal length. So basically we need to understand what is focal length and the focal point as we can see the center point of the uh, image plane that we are taking it where the object is projected. So that is known as focal point. Here everything in this image is being visualized with the arrow form. So with respect to focal point as you can see it is showing at the point which is situated at the middle point. Then we are having the image plane. Also it can be seen as a 2D view plane and also with the image object that we are taking it is in the 3D view plane. So the length between the object, 3D view object and the focal length is the distance. That distance is known as focal length. Okay. So this is what pinhole camera model is. Here this pinhole camera model is being represented with the form of lines in the form of a structure. So here as you can see the focal length will be the image plane, the 3D view plane and your image plane. Okay. So pinhole is the basic center point where your image lies of 3D. Where you are taking from 3D through virtual image plane to pinhole. So this is what the pinhole plane is which is converted to 2D image plane where you can see as an object as a view plane of any of the side. So this is what 3D is, that is what 3, uh, 2D is. With respect to 3D, the projection is taken place in the form of 2D. And in middle view plane which is placed is pinhole. Where a focal point will distance. With respect to the focal length, the distance between the pinhole and the image plane will be calculated. And with respect to that, the center point will be evaluated. And from that center point, the image plane will be projected to the 2D point. Okay, 2D image plane. 
so this is what the thing is that we can think for a pin hole camera model with respect to where we are considering virtual image plane which is placed between the pin hole and the 3d object okay so this is what a pin hole camera model is how the representation is been taken place the math representation we can say the matrix representation of a pin hole camera model as you can see here we are having a matrices form which is defined with the xyz plane because it's a 3d view form so world frame we can say camera film where it will be having the three of the axis x y and z with respect to center c which is placed as a zero point now that has been extended to the 2d plane. so 2d as you can see x and y z coordinate is coordinated with a 3d view plane and with respect to that the view plane which is placed here is a 3d point will be your actual point actual answer from where you will get the image okay so the projection line which you are projecting from your 3d to 2d is known as projection lines which is being shown here okay so optical axis and projection line is shown by the line itself and we are having the center point c which is projected till the z plane okay as you can see and the 2d view form view plane which is being at the center point okay and the focal length will be from this center that is world frame center to the 2d view plane center so that is the focal length f which is calculated first and then the projection will take place so this is what been whole camera max representation or we can say matrix representation of this camera model so the camera the calibration algorithm that calculate the camera matrix using the extrinsic and the intrinsic parameters will be defined where the extrinsic parameters that is will be representing the location of the camera in the 3d scene okay and the intrinsic parameters represent the optical center that i have already shown you in the diagram and the focal length of the camera we will be going to discuss more about the extrinsic and the intrinsic parameters after this models okay so basically you need to understand what is extrinsic parameters what is it is used to represent so extrinsic is used for the location of the camera in the 3d scene and the intrinsic parameters is used to represent the optical center and the focal length of the camera so here from the uh, uh, figure only you can see the three of the scaling factors that we have w is the scale factor with which you are taking the projection image position that you are taking that is image points x y and y and the world coordinates that we are taking the x y z 3d c with respect to one as a homogeneous coordinate and which is multiplied with the projection point p where p is the matrix that we can say projection matrix or we can say camera matrix which is equal to r of t okay r of t which is defined as an extrinsic and we can say rotation and translation with respect to whatever you want to apply for a particular image and k is the intrinsic matrix that is being multiplied with your extrinsic parameters so this is what the thing is that is considered for the pinhole camera so here the world coordinates are transformed to the camera coordinates using the extrinsic parameters so the camera coordinates are mapped into the image plane using the intrinsic parameters so here with this diagram as you can see how the world coordinate is been replaced to the image coordinate where the image is been represented using pinhole camera model so that camera world here arises or been formed with the pinhole camera model okay so with respect to that the center point is been coordinated first with respect to 2d image plane and the camera model image plane and that point will be the the length between that two center point is known as focal length so with respect to that the two of the degree is been find it out and after that the projection is taking place at the image plane okay so the world coordinate is been converted to the truly world coordinate that we want to have for a particular image and that we used to see it using the camera okay so the two parameters that we are going to discuss after this is extrinsic param parameters and intrinsic by which factor or by which parameter you are going to rotate or you are going to translate for a particular object or we can say transformation so these are the things that we need to understand for the pinhole camera model and thank you for watching this uh, the next models we are going to discuss in the next lecture thank you